you played Tom Jones and then the last one you caught a final my word you were playing well I'll give you that but yeah no I'm happy I am happy the way I'm playing I'm not going to say I'm going to sit here and say I'm going to win it you know we've got uh, the ever consistent best player in the world Tom Cousins on the other side of the draw so you know he's the man to beat at the end of the day um, we've got Chess Graham I think in the, in the semi isn't it absolutely yeah so he's from my neck of woods down in Plymouth mm -hmm. he's uh, had some great results himself in one of his previous matches 5-1 down to Connor Tracy came back and won 7-5 so certainly not to be underestimated as is none of these players here yeah, and when he when I got here on the Thursday, he was he was in the practice room next to me, and he was um, messing around with his tip. He was really struggling actually. Um, so I'm a bit surprised that he's had such a good run because normally when you've got tip issues, especially at this level, you know you're going to struggle. But he's obviously found a way. And like I said in the uh, interview last night, he's just one of those players that just won't go away. He's you know a great match player. So yeah, I've got it all to do. But this should be a good game. Two, two great players. Shane obviously had that winning streak in the first year, three in a row, was it? Unbelievable. Yeah, and I think Josh is um, he's probably underachieved, in my opinion. I think he's top quality, Josh, and I think he probably should have won more. But um, yeah, this should be a should be a good one. I think it'll be Josh's bad luck commentator because I've never seen him win yet when I've been on the commentary once. <laughs> so <laughs> blimey. Shane, however, is a, a player I know well. Again, he's, he's from down in the southwest. Played for England for many years now. Really solid performer. The safe cracker. Yeah, I think um, the black obviously goes bottom right, so it's, it should be a nice, comfortable finish. It's just he's played a couple of balls off balls. Um, just frees that left-hand side of the table up even more. So we'll just screw this one into the middle and then just screw down the line for the black. That's the way I'd go anyway, because you don't want to play the one in the corner now and risk leaving too much angle on the yellow. The way you were going, you'd have been on frame three by now. <laughs> Everyone's got their own styles of play. They have yeah. indeed. And if I'm having a slow match, then you know something's wrong with my game. So if they're over pretty quick, that means I'm, you know, I'm playing quite well and playing to my speed. So... It's a bit of thing. I was chatting to um, Aaron Davis yesterday and going about speed of players, and he said, he said, I need those extra couple of seconds. He said, just to double, in, in my mind, to double check everything that I'm doing the right thing, and it, it's just a process. He said, when he gets a 15 seconds a shot, he said, he said, I, I need to practice it because it really hurts him. Yeah, and even the fastest players, and I'm probably one of the fastest, I struggle with the 15 seconds. So, you know, hate to think how other play, players see it because, yeah. you know, I'm down on the shot very quick and, you know, play my shot within a second or two sometimes. Other players need five seconds just to get down. Oh, maybe that was tighter than we thought or he either just queued across it and missed it badly. But first mistake, yeah. yeah. So, well, he's got a full pocket, but he's not got the far jaw. And, yeah, you could see that would have gone in off a far jaw. So it just goes to show if you don't get close to the to the ball... Even if you have just got the middle of the bag, sometimes it can. It's not easy. No. It's you know, sometimes you, you do. Like I like to play those sort of shots off the near jaw. You know, some yeah. people like to play off the far jaw. So, so Shane will uh, be like in this situation off Josh's break, chance to break serve if you like. Yeah, going back to speed of shot is. I think when you play fast, you, you eliminate that little bit of doubt. I think Cause I, I used to play quite quickly. Not quite as fast as you play, but it's just—it's the speed your mind works. That's I'm, it. You know, with the you know Chris Mellon, when the balls break open, and, went, and the same with yourself after split, you can see it immediately, mm. pretty much. Apart from saying, well, okay, I'll just double check that. It's probably best to go that way because else I could snoop myself over here. Blah blah blah. But it's all done pretty quickly. But certain players need to really analyse it before they make their decisions. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. Everyone's got their own styles, so whatever works for them. You know, mine is just playing ultra quick. People criticise it, saying, oh, that's why you missed the ball, because no. you rushed it. But it's never the case of me rushing a ball. No. You know, we all miss balls for different reasons, but it's not as simple as, oh, you rushed it. Or well, it's a process. It. It's it, mm. you know, when you try and replicate it every shot, you know, go through the same 
little approach to, to every shot. And you watch like players on like Lee Kendall back in the day he had a very particular, meticulous way that he would address every shot, and he did it and just rinse and repeat, if you like. Mm. And he was great at it. I think when when I'm playing well, like I've kind of given myself the pot, so I just want to just get that pot out of the way and think of the next shot. Yeah. You know, whereas if you're not playing well, you, you're worrying about the pot sometimes as well. So you're putting the concentration into that. But when you're when you are floating, flying around, you just know the pot's going to go in. So you you kind of just get down, knock it in, and think about how, just how you're going to go about the rest of the clearance. And I think that's why I probably play quick because I just want to get that. There's no point wasting time on an easy pot. No. So I just get out of the way and um, yeah, think about the rest of the clearance as quick as possible. That keeps that just keeps my mind active. If I start dwelling, then I'll just lose concentration. Yeah. Well, this black for first blood for Shane Thompson. And in it goes. Go to Carrow Road a bit, dear. I try to, but I used to have a season ticket years ago, but obviously um, weekends are pretty tough to get out. Um, but I try and get to a few away games. If I'm away for Paul, I'll, I'll sometimes get a ticket. I managed to go to the Stoke away game a couple of weeks ago when we were there for a for a tournament, and it just so happened I got beat, so I went to the game. We won three 0 and that was that was a great a great atmosphere. Yeah, There's nothing better than away games. No, I've travelled around a bit <coughs> in the old football from time to time. Who do you, who's your team? Man United, unfortunately, at the moment not very mm. good. I used to go to quite a few away European games. They were always a good crack. Yeah, I bet. Not much chance of that many for any, any time soon. No, especially not Champions League anyway. But well, Shane Thompson now trying to restore his lead on these Reds. Pretty open, Sean. Yeah, it was a good split by Josh. All the balls went everywhere and nothing down. But a few dry breaks this week, and not just because they've been poor breaks. I mean, they've been really crunch breaks and then just everything colliding into each other near pockets and nothing going in. Mm. Makes no sense half the time, doesn't no. it? No. Yeah, these are about as nice as you can get. The only danger is... Um, that. Well, well, that's a danger now. <laughs> that is... That is... Well, that is just come out as bad as it, as it possibly can. That ball goes nowhere. An absolute look of complete disgust. I was going to say the only danger is the, is the red nearest the bottom right hand corner just to you, know, you want to be low on that really rather than well, sort of above the black. It's still tricky to do that as well. Mm. Well he can get there now but I don't know how he's going to go about getting that red out. That's a nice shot. So behind the yellow, on the, near the cushion. No, I don't, I, I don't think he can get the, get the cannon. I think he's got to go direct. Yeah, like that. He's just got to get as close to that yellow on the on the right hand side cushion as possible, and just try and flick the yellow and red. But he has to land on it as well. So that's how. Yeah, he's just caught the yellow. Mm. Nothing there. But what did look a pretty I mean, easy finish. That was that bad. That was that bad of a sort of outcome that, that there's a case to say he could have tried to leave the double into the top left-hand corner. Obviously, the yellow he's nearest to the left there is kind of where you'd want the white ball. Um, but that cannon wasn't easy. But he might just try and play a thin cut double. Oh, that's close. I, th I, th I think he time fell there. I'm, it's it's more of a guess, but I I, I'm I did notice actually the the sound <coughs> when the beeps are going, they go slightly before the numbers change on the screen. So whether they go by the beep or by the numbers changing, I don't mm. know. But there's that fr slight delay. Well, they're going to double check it. That's for sure. Obviously, it makes a, a huge difference because Josh will then have ball in hand. Yeah, and I'll just place the white next to the red to the left. Play that one down the cushion, as that is the awkward ball. Absolutely. Although, if it isn't ball in hand, you'd still want to be yellows, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But it just means he hasn't got to go and get on that ball or, or, yeah. or free it from the rail. It 
was very, very close. This will be milliseconds. As Shane Thompson awaits He's called the, the outcome. I did, I did think it was just... Now then, Josh Kane, ball in hand. He's immediately gone towards where you suggested, Sean. Just wondering how easily that yellow goes to right middle, just below the middle. Yep. You want to be right quite middle. close to it. Yeah. If you get a little angle in it, you pot this at the bottom, you get a li little ang angle on that over there now. And get a shot of it as early as possible. You yeah, you definitely play for it now. Looks fairly comfortable from there, but not from there. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah. Just drift into the well, depending on if he feels he can screw it, but it, if not, just drift into the yellow above it. Might be just slide off that and it'd be on one of the other two yellows at the top as well. Mm. He's screwing it out so he's confident. That's perfect on the top top yellow, I think. You can drop that in and play the other one into the middle and then come back down for these last two. Did Josh lose first round in the last event? Because I... He did. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really see him this weekend and I know Shane... Um, lost to my roommate Peter Mullaney in the first event so we'll both be desperate to have a run in this event that's quite funny because just before we played Peter Mullaney I was in the lift coming down with Shane with Q in hand I said who have you got he said don't know don't look at draws I went really he well, said yeah he said I'll just turn up and destroy him funnily <laughs> and I enough the score and he lost 7-3 just before I left to come down to commentate on this uh, Pete came up to the room and he said oh just send Shane just got in the lift and uh, just to make conversation, he said, oh, who have you got? He go, I don't know. That was it. End of conversation. So that's obviously his attitude to, you know, yeah. to, the, to the draw. But I'm pretty sure you would know who you're playing. I think that might be a... a bit, yeah. You might not a care. Bit of psychology there. Yeah, you might not care who you're playing, but you, you still want to know who you're playing. I mean, there are players that you'd rather not play. I'd, you know, if I was still playing now, you'd, you'd want to avoid... Well, somebody that's playing well for a start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I was in the, in the draw now, we would want to be playing you, to be honest, or Tom Cousins. But it's, there are certain players. I mean, they're all top professionals. But the way I sort of judge it is there are play the, the top players just make that mistake a lot less often than the other ones. Yeah. You know, that, ain't, that isn't really a natural place to put it. So maybe he's choosing to do the same thing, just put it to the side, just slightly to the side. Well, Josh's turn to go dry on the break. Yeah, and actually these reds are quite nice because he can, he can clear this one now, come down, um, and just get try and get to that red to the right hand side of the table as quick as possible and it's just it's gone wrong already it's a little bit unlucky yeah I, I don't know if he can come off the left hand side cushion with a bit of right I mean that's side. annoying I mean the start of your finish the first ball you pot and you immediately stuck to a ball in the middle of the table with nowhere to go. It's not as though yellows are in a really bad position. It's one that's on that right-hand rail. That's the only awkward one. And you feel that Josh will have a good go at trying to remove it from there should he get to the table, which you kind of think he will. Oh, that's a, gr that's a great effort. He's got it. Oh, super shot there from Shane Thompson. I'm not sure he specifically played the skill shot, you know, tried no. to lose, remove the yellow, but just wanted to go into it and get it, get it away from the pocket. Yeah, that's a nice double. Very good shot. Yeah, that's... Uh, so now back to where we were. I think he's going to be getting over the line. Shane Thompson, though, desperate for a ball off the break. 
Yeah, and nothing, just, nothing's really going right for Shane, is it? No, it's been the story of his his morning, really, Sean. But you can see there, he's he's gone from the middle of the table. He's queued down on the ball. He's got a little bit of a jump. Yeah. Um, so I think there is something in that. There's been a few dry breaks in this match. Josh dry broke last time, and then Shane sort of, you know, his first shot, he played a loose one, then played an incredible double, then missed a pot down in the bottom corner. So, like I said before, it's it's been just a little bit untidy from Shane. You feel like whoever got through this match is going to have to up their game a little bit if they're going to go deep into the tournament. And I think this is obviously only their, I don't know if they had a, any of them had a prelim, but, you know, they'll still feel like they're, they're starting the tournament, starting the weekend. Um, so they'll both be anxious to, to play well and get the first win. So there's that, to that, that part to play as well. Well, we're down to 15 seconds of shot. Yeah, Shane Thompson did play a match before. Josh Chain was already in this round. He drew Tom Ford and obviously he wasn't here. Yeah. Well, just one decent positional shot here, Sean, and it should be good night. Yeah, he's going to play this one. It's obviously thick enough, yeah. Just got to sort of dig into it. And he's just got to play a nice little... Um, make sure he gets the gap. Yeah, blue spot will be perfect. Yeah, and it's easy to... Ooh. It's so easy to, to just run out of position on these tables. You know, I was... I didn't want to call it straight away because I know how tricky they are to just land pinpoint yeah you know and when you've been playing on the other tables which Josh has oh he's fluked it oh my word that is an incredible finish in that match well Josh Kane and he's smiling I mean and so he should be taking on Callum Singleton it will be Chris Melling with the opening break here race to 7 50 minutes as you are all aware this is for a spot in the last 16. Simon Webb and Lewis Roberts with you for this one. Lewis, first time we commentated together this weekend. It's been, uh, how, how are you and, and good to see you. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, obviously commentating on Chris Manning beat last night is a bit of a signal. But, Sorry um, about that. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you've had a habit. You did it Scott Gillespie yesterday, didn't you? So. I did, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it should be a good game this, obviously. Chris played, uh, played very well last night. Looks in good touch and good form. Uh, his break was working well, as we've just seen there as well. So yeah, I'm expecting a really good game between these two. Yeah, Chris turned up this weekend. He, he said he, he felt good. He felt really confident, and then just didn't happen in in event one at all. But he said he, he was. He feels like he's he's flying really. So expecting a really high level from him. Yeah, and it, uh, one of the things that I found in our match was was I mean, obviously we know he plays very quickly. He see, sees the patterns literally very very quickly. Um, yeah, and he was he was rattling the frames off. I think he I think he had one frame that was about 45 seconds long in the middle of the match. And uh, yeah, he looks in really good touch, and um, you can sort of see he's got a bit of confidence about him. So let's uh, see how far he can go in event four. Shot's just gone wrong there. He wanted to come around and have that top yellow to come back down, so he's in a bit of trouble now. Yeah, I had the match that I didn't get to see any of your game, but I heard it was incredible the, the level that you played at as well and, and the level that he played at. I've heard that for both your matches this weekend. I feel like you've played unbelievably well and just come out on the wrong side of two real tough losses. Yeah, I feel, I feel a bit hard done by this weekend. It's just, uh, I came in feeling really good, but it's as we know with this game, you, you got to break well, and, and that's kind of cost me. And it's, it's been frustrating because coming into the weekend, my break was working really good. That was actually one area that 
of my game where I, I felt felt comfortable and confident. And uh, yeah, I, I, I just you need seven chances to win a match, and I haven't had seven chances against uh, many or cousins. So yeah, a little bit of a, a sickness, but that's the way it goes, and you just have to keep plodding along. I feel good, and I'll keep putting the work in, and hopefully it'll uh, I'll reap the reward soon. Yeah, I guess it's the dealing with the losses. I think it's the hardest thing to do in the game, but also one of the most, well, maybe the most important thing. Yeah, I think whenever whenever you lose a match, you've got to, e even if you haven't done anything wrong, you know, you, I mean, obviously, I, I've, I've against Kunza had four dry breaks, so at some point you have to sort of look at it and say, break needs work. You know, you, yeah. you, at this level, you can't have that. And it's it was a bit harsh because I felt like I was hitting the break good. I wasn't sort of like miscuing it and, and, and getting bad contacts or bad timing. It was just, just not working, but you, there's always stuff to work on. And yeah, with all the losses, you've got to take the positives, but you've got to be honest with yourself and, and look at the areas where you've got to improve. Yeah, that's it. Always striving to improve. Lost a turn on the previous visit for Callum. That was just to give himself this opportunity. Doesn't have to go, but I'd be surprised if he doesn't. Yeah, looks like he's got a nice angle here just to bump that red off the cushion if he can, just push it over to the, the middle pocket. One on the left hand side cushion just needs to be careful with, make sure it gets nicely on it to be able to drop it in minimum of fuss. Yeah, he's going to want to get the cue ball nice and close. It's going to be important to have an angle. Doesn't want to land straight on it. He's got a couple more shots to navigate first. to have a nice angle on it so you've just got to float it down rather than having to punch it in which makes the shot a bit easier of taking hitting it with as least amount of pace as possible Callum's looking good for the first frame gone through this really nicely isn't he you know, it's, it's one thing to have a nice open table like this but you know, there's a little bit of work in it but he's, he's just been spot on all the way through yeah I always think it's nice to have clearances like this first frame you've, they're, they're not not dollies you've got to do a little bit of work but they're still fairly straightforward and they settle you down really nicely and uh I think he's eyeing up a, a double double. Let's get up to the eight ball. Well, there's one. Yeah, it was difficult to know really what Callum should do. I wonder whether potting one at the top and then laying a really good snooker would have been the one. I don't know what advantage you get even if you get cube on hand, but he's certainly gambling here, giving Chris an opportunity to play the double. Now he's got the other. Yeah, I, d I didn't know whether he could have put the top and almost played a three ball plant. Oh dear, he gets the double double, doesn't get the eight ball. Yeah, he just wanted to sneak behind it there and just caught it on the way through. So just pots the, the red using the eight ball, lost a turn, turn it over and... I Gets himself some equity in the frame by keeping the eight ball there, but Callum's got quite a big window to, to play the snooker here. I think, would you be tempted to even play the play the cue ball down and leave Chris the edge of the eight ball to force him to move it? Yeah, possibly. Try and make it as awkward as possible to come off the, the bottom cushion and get that full ball. Yeah, and he has done exactly what you said, left in the edge. Chris is, what Chris is going to try here, he's going to try. He wants to come around, hit, make contact with the eight ball, make sure he hits the cushion, and leave the cue ball behind it if he can. Well, he's eyeing up the potting angle there. There's not much room for the potting angle. No, there's not a lot at all. Got to be careful not to hit red first, and then pot the eight. 
Like he, he found the potting angle, just went straight in. It doesn't really help Callum though. Cube on hand, he's still in a in a bad spot. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'd be sending a red up that end of the table and snookering again. Do you get more nervous when you're playing Chris Melling in this situation than other players? Just because he's got so much form for the miraculous? Um, no, I think you still have to... I think the right shot's still the right shot. Yeah. But it's just that maybe if you... You know, if you get someone like Chris in the snooker, he's probably more likely to get out of it. You know, I think, uh, personally, I would just accept that as, as the risk because it's still the right shot. The right know. shot's the right shot. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's Chris or not. I'm not sure if Callum just slightly overhit that shot. I think he'd love to have had that red just that touch higher. Yeah, they, uh, he'd love to have it to, to have gone. So then, if he did get ball in hand again, he could have used that to break the red out. Close. <laughs> it's on repeat, <laughs> on repeat. Chris can't quite work it out. But he, is it, as you say, he's he's got to watch hitting the red and then potting the eight ball. So he's he's got to be very careful with that. So he's. He's almost going about it quite gingerly, but keeps missing it just on the high side. Yeah, and this is the scenario where if, if Callum could have kept that red in play on his last shot, he'd, he'd have been using it now to break out, but he's going to put it back in a position where he, if he does manage to get ball in hand. I think where he's going to put the cue ball now is probably less likely to get ball in hand, though. Oh, has he tied that up? Yeah, maybe if it stops half a turn short of where it is now. It's a lot easier for him if he gets ball in hand. But as you say, you, you don't expect Chris to not um, to, to foul here. You expect him to get out of this, this snooker now. Yeah, and I think I think if, if Chris, so I'd be side cushion, if he just makes contact with the eight ball full ball, almost puts it back where it is. Especially if he just moves the red enough that the eight ball might squeeze in or something. And he, he could have an advantage, but he's, yeah. he's going more than the one. He's got it this time. That's excellent. What a shot. Can Callum pinch that pocket and develop the develop the red? A cannon on the red, or all, all the eight balls fine here. Yep, there we go. A little bounce, and he's all good. Yeah, all well worked out from Callum. Yeah, I, do, I think I think you do have a point though. I think when when you're in that scenario, you don't want to give your opponent too many chances at. Ha making a shot or something happening, and especially like I say, especially when it is someone like Melin, the right shot is still the right shot. But I think you don't want to give your opponent too many chances at, at pulling something off. It's a strange shot. Yeah, I was expecting just a follow through for the yeah. short side position, and well, make it. Wasn't wasn't the best of shots to bottom right, in all honesty. That's why he's got this trickier eight ball, but trickier than I thought it would be. Oh, where's that white ball? Where's the white ball? Wow, that's oh, incredible. Oh, that that is incredible. That's a gift for Chris Melling. Unbelievable yeah. gift. Yeah, so he has switched to the front ball. Oh, it's going to be dry for him. And he's hit them all right as well. Just, just didn't make a ball. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> shot that is. Yeah, Very that's clever. Good, that's good vision, that is. He's opened these right up now. I was about to make the point it, it's a messy layout. And he's played one shot. <laughs> and it's gone from being a really, well, what I thought was going to be a fiddly finish to being... Well, routine. Yeah, and even from there, getting onto this slightly awkward red is getting it out of the way as early as possible. I think that's just what, what you see with Chris more than any other player is, is the, his ability to see the shots that just completely develops a frame. Not only just to see it, but to see it as quick as he does. Is, uh, I, think that's what, I think he's the best in, in, in the game at doing that. Yeah, unbelievable at it. A minute. Yeah, if that, I mean, it was all about the first shot. If he can find the counter here, and he should, no, he's not going to do it in one visit, but he needs that red to keep going. It has.
but then he's got the next break. If he can start to find some positivity, make Chris be 6-4 and make him think about things. Yeah, definitely. You, you, you've still got to keep going, haven't you? Because you, you never know. Even though, that the, obviously, the chances for Callum in this match are very slim now, you've still got to keep going because you never know. Obviously, Chris has made a couple of errors in this match. He's not been perfect. So, if you can, like you say, if Callum can take this frame, break condition next to make it 6-4, you never know. Well, he hasn't got the snooker, which I thought he had. Oh, Chris Melling. Another special. Oh, that is incredible. What a shot. If you're going to snooker Chris Melling, you have to snooker him. You cannot give him those looks. What an amazing shot. And the eight ball to match. Get to see the first uh, Tom Cousins break. Another sledgehammer. But it's going to be dry, and that has been the theme this weekend. I've seen uh, a lot of players hitting the break well, but the balls are just not going down consistently. Like, you know, look at them, just all over, just nothing finding a, a pocket. And this is a really good opening chance for Rupp. He, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big one for him too. It's one where you kind of put a marker down against a player that, you know, the calibre of Tom, you know, you need to be send, sending... Uh, some kind of like um, signal to him that you know you're here to compete and compete well. Nice control there from Rob, just pulling the cuba back through those yellows. Not want to be in a nice straight line. And I can pop away these three reds that are in that little tick formation. Yeah, it's interesting what he's going to do here. Is he going to run through and play the two at the bottom first, or it's just a little bit of a fiddly shot if he wants to play on the two that are near this red? So I wouldn't be surprised if he. Yeah, he's done it well. But it's, see, it was a little bit too close to his work, so I could have understood if he went down the table there. I think he can just screw back and put the other one in the middle. Well, that's a nice little angle now. No, it's not a good angle though, is it? Well, it is. You screw off the side rail, come back and across for the ball, the bread at the bottom of the table. You don't like them shots. You, no. you like to be just rolling them about the place. It's true, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not on the uh, on the right line for me. So he's got to play a shot now. Yeah, look at See? this. Look. He's got no, to play he didn't a want shot. that bump, but I think he's got half a pocket here. That was all about the wrong line. Trouble with this shot now is if he can get into that middle bag with his red, he's holding for the for the red at the bottom. Yeah, so he's gonna have to he's gonna dig in. The harder he hits it, the more accurate he needs to be, because he's it looks like he's got maybe two thirds of the pocket. Yeah, it's good, good recovery. I told you it was easy, old fan. Yeah. Didn't believe me. Well, he's had to ch uh, like chase a little bit towards the end, which uh, he wouldn't have had to if the the, the line was right for the uh, the third red he, he potted. Absolutely. Well, nothing wrong with Rob Warren's potting. Yeah. So he obviously feels this goes comfortably. He's played position on it. Looks like 1 0 to Rob. Well, down goes the black ball. Uh, as do most players. Uh, but obviously, Tom entered every tournament as the favourite. So I think at the moment he's probably where Tiger Woods was maybe in golf. You know, he was always a favourite for every golf tournament he entered. Another big break, but dry again. So Rob um, needs to make sure he punishes that dry break. Another big danger in this event for seems a little resurgence of a certain Mr. Melling, looking very ominous. Yeah. I was on comments with him last night. Well, not with him. I was on his match, and he was blowing players away. And he started again today, didn't he, with Callum Singleton, two one down and one seven two in quick smart fashion yeah I think um, a lot of the players that came back from China um, they probably struggled a little bit with, with adjusting back to this game uh, you know the small cue ball people don't realise how much of an adjustment that is because you're playing a cue spot um, for the best part of two or three weeks where the cue ball is the same size as the object balls and so when they go to China do they moan about they've been playing this game when they no, get there. No, it's <laughs> easy to adjust. Oh, right, okay. From English pool to Chinese is, is easy to to adjust because you kind of know um, 
what's the right word? The con like the conditions are more what you want them to be, if that makes sense. Whereas this, this, this is the only cue spot, cue spot where the object uh, object balls are bigger than the cue ball. It's always a bit tricky to get used to the small cue ball again and how it kind of like throws and you know the side and everything else. So I think uh, th there was a couple of shots Chris played against Andrew Patchett on the Thursday where I felt like maybe he wasn't at home with the cue ball. But yeah, having said that, another mistake from Robbie. He might say he was a little bit unlucky to leave himself where he did after the first shot. Um, but he's given a Tom another good chance here to capitalise on a mistake and every mistake that Rob makes is going to hurt more and more and um, affect his mindset potentially we'll have to see wow. that, was a, that was a lot better shot than it looked yeah, very clever there, from Cousins. Just the way he got into that ball, I mean, that looked really thin to me. But he got into that cue ball so well. I think the, the, the whole finish is now pretty elementary with that one positional shot. Yeah. Should be uh, fairly simple now. Drop, drop, couple of stone shorts, I'd say. And she has the screw back. Yes, it's been very controlled from Cousins in this frame. Puts a cue ball on the rail. Yeah, just has to drop it in. Dead straight on the black. Yep. Took, he's taken these out pretty well. Again, I think it was all about the transitional shot to get on the ball that was on the top cushion. He played it beautifully. Yeah. Well, he's took your advice, done just that. So, um, does he have the one cushion? I wonder if he's got the one cushion between that the red um, that's in the bulk area. Plays that with a little trace of side. I think I think that shot's there, maybe. No, he's going the cocked out way. Yep, he's going off the three cushions. Is he hit it? I don't it's think he's hit it. It's wide anyway, but yeah, it's a bit soft. Yeah, he didn't hit it. Rob will just put this red off the yellow to free the black up and I'd well. be absolutely amazed if he doesn't mop up after that. Just what, a, just what a great chance this is for Rob. Just needs to make sure where, where the yellow goes. Yeah, that's good. He's controlled that pretty well. That's it. You just want locking it down the bottom rail for the best case scenario there. But yeah, these reds are sat there begging to be potted. Yeah, it's going to take a really big mistake for Rob not to clear up here and uh, get on the hill. 6-3 will be a big lead. 15 minutes left on the clock, or maybe 14 and a half by the time he's finished mopping these up. Well, it's been a professional performance from Rob Warren. Knocked in some big pots along the way. Yeah, I don't think when he's, he when he's fell out of position, he's got himself back in. He has potted really well. Yeah, just needs another good pot here. I don't think he would have wanted to, to leave him. Wow. I've got to say that. There's the curse of the commentator. Do you know what that is? What I called it about a frame or two ago, the Tom Cousins effect. Yeah. Hundred yeah. Rob does not miss this. Well, he's a big There's potter. No, is there, you know, his, his game is based around good potting. Cue ball. It's all right. It's just going to pull up. Ooh. That's a massive error. How's well, well. Like the finish that Rob had there, he'll be absolutely kicking himself. Oh, Tom. Oh my word! Now you would not believe that. 
Yeah, mental. I mean, it could could be a case of mental fatigue. You, you don't know. Um, let's see if Rob proves me right. I did say the next chance to go home tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Is he gonna take this take take this chance confidently, <laughs> like I predicted? I mean, it's a glorious chance. Look at the, look at the reds. He couldn't. He, I don't think he can ask for a better chance than this. He has to hold himself together. Just these five reds and the black for the match. And to inflict the first defeat this week on Tom Cousins. Yeah, and I think it's going to happen too. I, can't, you know, I don't want to put the curse on him because I did say that the last frame too when he missed that ball, but. Only because I know Rob, uh, as a player, wouldn't miss those more times than that, so... I think this the only thing that can go wrong, and it was a big if. These are done. Three well. stun shots. I'll screw back here a little bit. Yeah. Well, this looks all over. We will see Tom Cousins again this evening in the first semi-final of Pro Series 3, but for Pro Series 4, this black will end Tom Cousins' participation in that. And in it goes, and it's the whacker, Rob Warren, who's triumphant, beats Tom Cousins, flicks the first defeat this week. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it, the, the game's too um, volatile, isn't it? There's a lot yeah. of variables involved. Obviously, that's, this is one of them, making balls off the break. He hasn't made a ball off the break there. Um, yeah, just uh, he, needs the, he needs everything to come together in, in um, over the course of a couple of days. And that's not easy. The Yorkshireman comes to the table from your neck of the woods as well. Yeah, Keith is number one. <laughs> a lot of people wind him up and call him Keithley's number two, but yeah, I know, I know the pecking order. He's your old pal. Yeah, uh, uh, unfortunately I've known him a long time. And Brian Halcrow there, looking on. <laughs> I did say I was going to be uh, a little bit mean to him in the commentary, so this is all tongue-in-cheek. Well, fabulous player is Chris. Yeah, brilliant player to mm. watch. Probably one of the finest players to ever play the game. He doesn't mind a bit of ribbing, does Chris? He's, uh, he gives plenty, doesn't he? Oh, doesn't he? This is why I'm going to give him a little bit in the commentary. <laughs> but this is uh, turning to a bit of a difficult finish now. The Blacks also looks like it's tied up. I don't think it goes anywhere. Well, Chris is an expert at picking out finishes from nowhere, but this one's going to take some doing. Yeah, I wonder if we can play the yellow off the yellow into the bottom right corner pocket. Yeah, so he's done that. Still not easy. Can he play? Does he have to play the plant? Oh, this is really thin. I don't think he can get through to the parting angle to pot the one that's closest to a pocket. Is he playing the one cushion to make the plant? No, I thought, it, I thought that's what he was lining up there, but this is going to send the cue ball flying. Oh, he's had what a, a shot. brilliant shot, a little bit of a nice nudge, but probably deserves it. Just needs to be careful with this one too. Does he have to go through the black and the red, or can he... Yeah, he had to, but he just didn't find the gap. Still okay, still got the thing cut. Little shake of the head there. He's a bit annoyed that he didn't get right the way through, but has a shot. Yeah. Tough one though, bridging over that red as well. He has to control the pace. Oh. It's perfect. He's got the big bag, he can't miss this black now. Well, it's a fantastic finish there from Melin. Yeah, a typical Chris finish. Yeah. He found a finish where he looked like he was in a bit of trouble. He, he was sublime, didn't miss a ball. 
Hooky there. That cable was arcing right into the middle. And the yellows look really good. Again, I think he's going to... Is is well with the cue ball there? He, he lost control of that one, and he, he puts his hand out as an apology because Chris will tell himself, you know, anybody else flirts with those middle bags with with the cue ball on the break. He, he's brutal. Yeah. He is brutal with I've, it. I've heard it so many times. And that myself. was going in until the other ball came across and then Yeah, he will knock it in. So he's been fortunate. Yeah, and now all for all the world is going to be four 0 now. And Decky will be thinking, why, why does this happen to me again? Yeah. I think he's been on the end of some beats where he's not really done much wrong. But this is what I, you know, when he said that he's underachieved. This, this is probably well, one of the reasons do why about he can't this. do anything about no. it. I mean, obviously he made a mistake in the last frame. Who's to say two-one? Maybe that enough does happen. But yeah, I just think Declan's such a good player. You know, I've watched him now. Yeah, he's he is a, a good brilliant player. It's just. He He's classy, just all of it is such a talented player. But you can do nothing about this. You know, Chris has had a bit of fortune now on that break and not gone in off. And they've come out plumb again. And you know what Chris is like when he's in this mood? Yeah. Don't miss anything. A little bit loose with the cue ball himself, Decky, but got away with it but look at this split though well next He's match on here later will be Jack Whelan and Tom Jones that'll be following this you won't want to miss that Whelan finding his foreman newcomer Jones one of the exciting new younger stars of the game yeah this is what I like about Decky's game. He knows when to go and when to go. Even though he's four 0 down, he will still play the right shots. Um, he's been like that ever since I've um, uh, seen him play pool. I think he came back, came from a snooker background. So for someone, usually snooker players are a bit more gung ho, go for everything. But he's got a really good, um, um, what's the right word? G uh, good game management um, in his game. But Chris, even though people think that he's, you know, um, free-flowing, exciting to watch, he plays the other side of the game really well too, make no mistake. You know, world rules. When I used to play world rules with him, you know, he, he used to be really good at the other side of the game too, even though he was a, you know, people used to see him as a mental potter. But he had a brilliant touch, you know, he had uh, brilliant knowledge, what, to, what the right shots to play. So people don't, sometimes don't realise Chris has got that side of his game too. That needs to touch, just about. He's got the pace of that bang yeah, on, hasn't he? Lasting. Yeah, Chris is, is studious. He yeah. always has been. He's been a student of the game. And like you're saying, it's, it's very true. You can easily get led away from the fact that Chris has, has a very good safety game. Yeah, he does. Absolutely. You don't see that an awful lot of it because he's <laughs> belted the balls up and he's potted them before you can blink, but... Yeah, especially in this rule set, you know, you don't re really see any t uh, much tactical play at all. Uh, but obviously, we, he's, he actually came through the old EPA rules. Uh, he started, he's a bit older than me, so he started off a few years before me, so he played that. So he got, he got to learn the different rule sets, and it, with with learning and playing those rule sets, you, you, you kind of pick up uh, bits from each rule set, and you can eventually pull yeah. it all together and well, it becomes a full package. When he first appeared on the scene, um, is what was when I was playing as a, as a youngster, and he was very hit and miss, you know, you'd occasionally see like, he'd, he'd win a match in a blur and then two matches on the spin he'd, he'd do nothing because he just got constantly going game. Yeah. And then he suddenly learned, thought, hang on a minute, and that, that was down to the rule set. Yeah. But then he became more and more consistent, got himself into the England side and next thing he's winning world titles and yeah. you think, you know, he'd, he'd arrived and you know, nobody wanted to play, and that's the second one of these I've seen this week. Yeah. Carl Morris had one. We commentated on that match too, I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, we so did. Yeah. She's over over the moon with that, it's Chris. You actually played a good shot here too, the whole, uh, yeah. the, the finish had opened up. 
And what's he left, Decky? Not an awful lot, I don't think, is he? I think he can pot the yellow into the bottom left. Is he on that? The one that's uh, to the left of the uh, triangle. Mm. Can uh, get through here. Yeah, I think he's on. He still has a, a bad yellow uh, that's closest to the cue ball. Ah, he can't get through. Yep, yeah, got himself up the top of the table now. Is he going to leave that yellow into the right middle? I mean, that looks really Has tight. To, has to it's that's the way you know the balls are connected aren't they that's yeah but it has to be link. like right behind it i think he's going to go into it now though well he's freed that pocket up but that doesn't free the yellow up i just uh, no he's i'd have just uh, took he's left them two there and just try to to get rid of the the two up the top of the table and just took me medicine and give me so you want to get the one on the board and you know, if you get right behind that yellow, they, you can get it into the middle, and the black's easier than in the other middle. But yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't really know how tight of an angle that uh, yellow is into the middle. It is looks really acute, but I think I think if you're right behind it, you probably fancy potting it more than missing it. But it's it's a case of getting right behind it. That's probably what was tricky about yeah, it. Yeah, they're not easy. I mean, we saw in the, in the last game, Tom Cousins missed a, a shot very similar to that that tied into that middle, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, maybe not even as tight as this. This, no. one, this one's even more further away. And off the red. Oof. Oof, almost. Well, Has he left it on? Can Chris Melling get through to the red at the top? If he can, he's got an opportunity. If not, Declan Brennan might get back to the table in his frame. He hasn't got down on the shot yet, so maybe he can't. But even if he plays a swerve shot, I think it's a free swerve shot into it that he doesn't really leave much. So it probably value to just maybe maybe not even go for the pot, maybe just tying the yellow up or trying to and putting the cube on in. Yeah, that's a good choice spot. of shot. Yep. I think his red still goes, but he's tied the uh, yellow up completely now. Deck is in a lot of trouble in this frame. And this is what we're saying about Chris's safety and his touch. Yeah. Yeah. Clever shot there from Brennan. Yeah, Chris is uh, well ahead in the safety battle though, so he's just needs to make sure he doesn't do anything silly. Um, <laughs> Is is five against three? <laughs> is he going to look to play the uh, loss of turn shot here? Oh. See what I mean? Clever, clever, clever again. As long as that the yellows are not a plant, which I don't think they are. I think I don't think he has a pocket past the red in the bulk area. And he can't just play anything softly here either, really, because obviously he's got to hit a cushion after contact if he doesn't pot. Yeah. So. Nothing else really that Declan Brennan could do. He's glued. It's a good shot, that. Chris, it's to that red ball. It is a very good shot. It's, it's actually a very good shot because it's hard to it's hard to play good safety now. It's it's it's, it's going to be hard for him to get any type of snooker, but it's going to be hard for Chris to not leave him a sight of one of the two yellows. I think it's also hard mentally for Declan Brennan at four 0 down to be able to play this this level of safety because you know he's fighting just to get the first frame on the board and great touch there by Chris. <laughs> Just barely. Gl I don't think it was touching ball. I think the red glanced, yeah. glanced the red a little bit. Such a good touch. Any harder, he leaves. He leaves that yellow with a perfect angle to track up the table. Such a such a good shot that was. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame him for playing that. I think that's early. That's called advanced safety, that is. Yeah. Oh, 
Very clever going around all the handles <laughs> with the yellow and then sticking it next to Chris's red up there. Yeah, Chris won't mind that though. Now that now that red's completely tied up, it, it's kind of really killed Declan's chances in this frame. He left that a tad short there. He did try to leave the snooker there, Chris. Yeah, but do, do you know why he's a tad short there? Because he hasn't concentrated as hard as the last one. The last one, he had to get absolutely bang on because he was leaving something on for Decky. Here, you know, even if he leaves this yellow on, where the other yellow's gone, it's just a lack of uh, uh, concentration, I think, that one. So there's, like, there's no double on or anything. And whatever he does here, he's going to be shunting Chris's red ball. Well, he might not be moving Chris's corner. red, but he's definitely going to be freeing it. Well, he's definitely doing something. Yeah, good old Hevo. That's your when in doubt, give him a clout. Yeah, and just look where the yellow goes, just to make it doubly worse. I know, obviously, he, you know, Chris is probably would have cleared up anyway, but if that yellow goes near a near a pocket it just puts a little bit of pressure on your opponent but when it goes into the middle of the bottom cushion it there's there's absolutely no pressure on this finish whatsoever now well this has certainly been the longest frame of the match by some weight well this frame has taken longer than the first four frames. Yeah, you're right. Because uh, the the match clock was um, was on 40 seconds, uh, 40 minutes and a few seconds. So it's taken over 10 minutes this frame. However, the outcome has still been the same, the same winner of it. And it's Chris Melling, and he goes five nil up now against Declan Brennan. Next match after Christoph Lambert on table two will be Neil Raybone against Dom Cooney. Oh, when it rains, it pours. Did you see that? Well, she's looking at the scores. I'm going to have another look at it now with you, Arfam. Have a look at this. Cue ball controlled perfectly. Three, two, oh. three. Just literally, it was destined to go into that middle pocket. The way the the way it was nudged three or four times. The only it, good. It's just amazing how it all goes in one direction, mm. doesn't it? Everything. You just don't think that. You know, <coughs> what what is fair about this game? Sometimes, like you know. Declan's not done a great deal wrong, but we, he's experienced enough to know that he, he'll have dished out similar treatments to other players where you know things have gone his way, but it doesn't make it any easier to take, I can assure you. No, because you, you get yourself prepared, you know, an hour before the match thinking of all the scenarios where you think you can win, it goes through your head, I suppose, and you, yeah. you think, right, if I do this right and I'll, and I'll, and I'll keep my head down and I'm going to do this, blah, 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 you go out, don't get anything off the break except the cue ball, and you're playing against a man who's missing nothing, and any tiny little bit of run, he's going in his favour. That's it, it's... Uh not to say Chris has been lucky, but, you know, it just it seems to be one-way traffic, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, just, no, maybe not Chris has been, I mean, I think the one bit of luck he had was probably the break, the second break, where he was going to go in off, um, and another ball knocked here away. But yeah, just Declan's not really, other than that one chance in the third frame, he's not really had much to go at, even this frame. Look at the state of these reds. Well, he's going to attack this into the centre. Yeah, so now Declan, I think he's not throwing his arm at that one. Yeah, a bit. he's not. He's not playing his. He, w he wouldn't have done that um, at if three he was six. No yeah, <laughs> this is not Declan now that that we're seeing. A bit of frustration came out in that first shot. I know what he's looking. He's looking at playing this double and then cannoning into this cluster by the middle bag, but. If you don't get this double, you're basically handing the match to Melin. That's correct. I think that yellow over the top right corner does put. Yeah, that was a big ass there. He's free to That looks like in. good night. Yeah, I think as long as that red, uh, the yellow next to the red pots, yeah, which it does. Because he's just played position on it. This is These are done now. Can't see Chris messing these up. No. Well, do, do feel I'll for feel, Yeah, I feel sorry for Declan. You Nothing's gone his way. No, you don't. You don't like to see anyone get whitewashed. No. Nope. At this level. 
It's a lonely place, but he'll, he'll come back. He's too good a player. And he knows um, knows what the game's about, you know? Any, this could have happened to any player. It can indeed, and it has done on to many players against the magician. And it is Chris Mellin who parks the black ball in the middle pocket. And he wins by seven frames to nil. And he's looking ominous. Wow, wow, the bouncer is known for his big break. Yeah, and that's that's a big penalty ball anywhere on the table. Yeah, not just the in-off where you've got to go behind bulk. This is ball in hand anywhere. So, and they've split out. Yeah, and the difference it makes, mm. as you said, anywhere on the table means Stevie can just come down and get on that awkward one straight away. That's right, dream start really. I mean, that's, you couldn't have some more than that, could you? Now Stevie's yeah. just finished. It's, it's uh, probably 15, 20 minutes since he, yeah. he beat um, Dylan Leary because Stevie's the number two seed. He's at the bottom of the draw. Mm -hmm. His matches go on later, and, you know, and top, you know, work from top down. And right. he's just finished. And mm. whether that's a factor or not, but yeah. and Stevie's such a good professional that minute he, he finished he knew he was straight on it, it's that's right that's, it's something that as soon as you know you've got an even number seed then you you know you're going to be playing back to backs yeah and it, it's and you just get on with it whereas Simon was had a lot more of a gap between matches yes yeah yeah I commentated with, uh, with Simon Flaxman on the um, on the last match Stevie against Dylan and uh, yeah they both struggled both struggled Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if a change of mm. change of arena, straight back on, of course, but yes. change of arena, you know, fresh start, fresh mind. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes a match just get can get like that, can get scrappy. That's right. I think the start could be important. If he can yeah. find a rhythm at the start, yes. who knows, he might, he might be able to find that full flow. Yeah. I mean, I, I often find if I'm back-to-back -back commentating um, in between matches, even if I've only got five, ten minutes maximum, just walking and going outside, yeah. taking half a dozen breaths of fresh air from outside, you're facing out to the Irish Sea. It's reset. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Whereas if, you, if you're stuck in here and just walk out and hang around the office and then go back in, you kind of you get stale after three or four. But yeah, just that reset. And that, uh, hopefully Stevie managed to get a chance to do that. But yeah, nightmare start there for Simon. Stevie's come out nicely there. That's a good shot. Didn't want to be short. Must be dead straight on this last red so we can just run through. Yeah, that's nice. He's going to come back. In there, Stevie. I mean, you would have had the choice of if he was dead straight running through for the eight ball to the right centre, but something I noticed in his last match against Dylan two shots where he had to play delicate. Ooh, wow, oh, that was he was up out of that one straight away. Well, that's quite incredible, it really is. I mean, he's, he was very methodical, worked really hard through that finish, mm. and, and it was all there. And well, he must just come across it. See that cue come out, yes, yeah. butt end of the cue came away from his body, then cued across the left side. Got a bit of a deflection on the cue. Yeah, but Stevie had to play two delicate run-through shots, only three or four inches, and both of them he, he under-hit and left himself sort of fixed behind his, his opponent's ball. So he elected to be positive on it. I thought he might have got away with it, but mm. just got the gap through. Tough pot, and she just drops in yes. and just accepted what he had. Didn't try and do too much. Mm. So, we can just to drop this yellow into the left centre. Oh, that's a really, really well played shot. Yeah, excellent.
So Simon will be very grateful for this opportunity after, uh, like I said, the nightmare first visit to the table. And um, wouldn't have expected this, but I haven't seen Simon play this weekend yet, but he definitely looks positive and quite assured with his queuing. And that's uh, it's essential. With, I mean, with any match at this level, you can't afford to get off to a slow start, but you need to find your feet pretty much straight away. It's a bonus visit though, isn't it? He it would is. have he would have yeah. expected to lose the frame all the way through it. And, yeah. And I mean, more than a bonus as well is that this will really hurt Stevie Dempsey. It's a double whammy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, if, if Simon came up with a big break and a clearance to go on top of it, you know, it's just a normal start to a match. But yes. the fact that he came up with a gifted that chance away and, yeah, it's not been taken from Stevie. That's a, yeah, it's a tough one. This is all for Pro Series 4. Pro Series 3 will conclude tonight. Quarter fight, sorry, semi-finals and final will be tonight, as will Women's Series 3. Keeps the cue ball on the table this time, does the bouncer. So he'll be much happier with the way this one's come out. Made another ball and has an opportunity. And it's a very good one, actually. These lay out, these are laid out nicely. Yeah. He will take reds. It's just a case of that red by the yellow. I'm pretty sure it does go top left. Yes, yeah. Soft coming yellow, perfect. Perfect. ends up straight on the last red down the left side the eight ball does go to the right center past the yellow so so I'm not too worried about making sure he's got an angle on that last red just checking exactly where he wants a cue ball to make it as easy as possible to run the red into the top left and track down for the his last red he played that with left hand side then just to make sure he had the angle, didn't want it to go natural and be dead straight because then he'd have had to try to force something out of it to get the cue ball down, didn't want to play the last last red long so he's got a slight angle there, he can just stun the cue ball down center if the pocket was narrowed at all you could easily draw the cue ball back towards the left center for the eight ball to bottom right but no need Very nicely done from the bouncer. Mm -hmm. Cue ball tracking down, didn't get touched by anything. But, it's in play. Reds all go. Yellow's a little bit more clustered. But once, if you if you decide to go yellows, we could go either by the ball here. But if you decide to go yellows, then um, yellow is nearest to on the left side. Just tracks through the gap. 
and just rolled it through. He could he could clear up those four yellows on the left side really quickly, and then every other yellow was quite clear. So yeah, just soft roll this one in. Soft roll it with power. <laughs> <laughs> it's another beautiful chance, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Look at right. this layout now. Yeah, absolutely landed plump. Have you ever seen that book, uh, Coleman Balls? It's called. It's all about David Coleman, the um, yeah, the, the, the sadly passed away presenter of of Question of Sport, who was a sports commentator, and it's all about little faux pas that commentators have made in the past things they've said that have come across wrong <laughs> and mistakes they've made like Murray Walker when he was talking about Rally Cross when he s said this driver he's just his vision is perfect and he drove straight into a grass bank <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah things like that and um, you know, I just think of every time I say something like oh he just trickle this one in and smash it around four cushions yeah so you sort of hang your head in shame thinking what was said can't be unsaid yeah I always think of Cornwall Balls it's a great book Yeah, so Simon's tried to move that, that red from the eight ball. I mean, don't know if he necessarily tried it that time, but he's tried to move it a couple of times. But the, the eight ball goes into the top left. If he leaves the left hand, takes his left hand yellows out and leaves the right hand one his last ball, it's very simple to get onto that eight ball. There we go. So we go left again. Left again, stop dead off the right yellow, and then eight ball to corner. So bouncer bounces into a lead. Yeah, just another one, isn't it? Mm. Continue. Yes. We continue. Three two. Simon Fitzsimmons now leads. And we get back underway. Dangerously close for Stevie, but Cubal stays yep. and the on the table. So does everything else, though. Yeah. Yes. The hammer's yeah. hammer's not working right now. So Simon will be desperate to get a yellow down. Just look at that bottom left corner of the table. If he can get a yellow down, it leaves him in prime position. Played. Nicely played. Nicely played. One little tricky one is the one centre of the table next to the red. But yeah, this is uh, Simon's in prime position to take this to a five three. When you deal with the one below the eight ball though, hmm. what's the plan there? You getting rid of that out the way early? I think getting rid of it when you haven't got a problem on the table I think is a good time I mean yeah some interesting decisions to make here really just the we talk about pattern play and I feel like this was one where the pattern really is quite important it could make this look really simple or it could get awkward if you can get straight on it between the red and the eight ball he can play it off in off the knuckle straight and screw straight back out the gap. So as long as you straighten, you can hit a full ball. Is he going to go now? Because he can play it now and just screw straight out. Good big test of Q in though. Yeah, I imagine you pop this and drift down there, but now we play it. That's it. Now it's dead straight. You can just you can play this in off the knuckle and screw it out through the same gap. Not screwing on a good line though, is it? I mean, the one on the left-hand side still feels awkward. Mm. Simon does like a double. He's mm. good at them, but it, it's awkward to drop it in the middle. It is. But 
If he can screw out to about where his hand is, great. Mm. So he's forced himself into the double. Yeah, he'll take that. He'll mm. be over the moon with that, really. Yeah. And it could have been a lot worse. Yes. I don't think that was the line he was trying to pick. Mm. Yeah, just slightly came across it then. And it's lost the cue ball into the red. But he's messed up the reds a bit. So play this double. Um, may play it a little bit harder to square it up so he can bring... Wow, he's got both doubles. Oh, that's a sharp cut. Oh, oh no. Oh. I'm really... So, I mean, he must have been slightly awkward on the line of that double in terms of not mm. being able to get good on the next ball. And yes. That's a problem. So Steve's going to take cue ball in hand and play the top of those three reds you can see now. Yeah, slight angle to split the other two. <coughs> if he's go. if he's dead straight on the double, he can get himself on that on the pot that he took on again. Yes. But if he's just off straight at all, then it, it gets even harder, mm. and he didn't have much room to play with. So yeah, big moment that was. Yeah, really awkward. It's one of those. I say, I think the, the pattern was everything. If you get the pattern right yeah. there, you could have made that finish look easy. But it, it was anything but. That's right. There was yeah. some some problems that just somehow Simon wasn't able to work out. Yeah, I mean that's the difference. Was he five three to four all? I mean, it should be. Yeah, yes. Stevie should be taking these out. He knows that. Yep. Just don't want to leave himself on that bottom one later on, so that's nice. Play the plant now. center and then top corner again so loaded left hand side bring this across to the side cushion it's the safest way look at that perfect perfect just a little uh, tip for all you budding amateurs out there that's the shot to play how many times can you think of playing that shot to the corner and then drifting the white into the left left center yeah that's it be mindful of your work and look at that split there just a veritable explosion just that eight ball and red down the bottom corner is there the way Stevie can play a ball and plant the plant the able to get the red in. Go for it now. Look at that. Lovely. Straight away. Problem dealt with. Now it's just a case of connecting all these up. You probably play this on a screw up table now. Leave the red down the bottom corner of his last ball. There we go. It's just a case of being methodical with your work now. Yeah, just one on the right-hand side, isn't there? That just needs a little bit of work. But you can drop on it now. Oh, oh no. no it's just He's thrown so much wider than he was yeah. expecting. He's landed, actually. He's very fortunate to land like he has. Yes. I mean, he's wrong side of perfect on this one, but <laughs> hey, he's not going to complain. Yeah, it could have been on nothing and could have tied up the top right-hand corner. Mm. So he's opted to go for the double. Go for the double and just leave the cube where the red is. Be perfect. Taking his extension so he can just. He knows you're not going to need it again after this shot. That's key. Oh. No. Oh, no. That's tough for Stevie to take. Yeah. That could be his final shot this weekend. Wow. That is painful. Just a spin on that on that ball and it's going to the pocket and hits it. Just left of centre as you're looking and it spins out. You go left of centre and spins around. Does the old 270. That is painful. Yeah, that would be a horrible way to, to lose as well. But it just that shot, the first shot of the four up in the top half of the table, which came out wide, caused him that problem. Causing that problem is a little bit... Bit careless. 
I think Steve will accept this uh, this result just because of he knows he hasn't been on his game. He's been fighting the, the the lack of position, as you said, the two frames ago. Not one shot did he have the cue ball where he wanted it. But Simon has been very methodical and, and, and gone about his business very well. Had a little wobble in, mm. in the middle, but yeah. by and large he's been very good. Mm. We can all enjoy a little wobble. Yeah, so you play the the left red now. The left yellow now, sorry. And then bring the white ball back up table. Perfect. So, Simon Fitzsimmons about to make this a 7-5 victory over Stevie Dempsey. And our number two seed. Yeah, Stevie Dempsey is eliminated by the bouncer. Simon Fitzsimmons mm. is through to the quarterfinals. We'll see him tomorrow morning. We will hear from him after this short break. We saw Tom in the last one just struggle a little bit. I think that's probably a key talking point for both of these players, to be honest. When I, when I watch sort of both of them, I, I know I've always, Chippy's always got that power behind his break, hasn't he? But I know it's all, it seems to be a big talking point about a lot of games that he plays, especially whenever I've seen it. it in commentary, it's always mentioned a lot, but I've never particularly fought Jez as a big power breaker. Um, so you, you see there, he's, he's, he's tried to time them as well as possible rather yeah. than go for power. Yeah. And, um, you know, he controlled the cue ball brilliant, but doesn't really ever seem to look like making a ball when, when you hit him like that. That's how I feel anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yourself, you've got a monster break. You time it really well. Got great power in it. Is that is that what we're aiming for all the time here? Is just to just to get that power through the pack? Yeah, that's what I care. That's what I care for. Really, is yeah. it's mainly the power. I'm trying to control it as well as possible <coughs> as well, obviously. But to be honest, as long as I'm getting the balls spread open, yeah. that, that's the main thing for me. I've I've said a few times, like I feel when players take a bit of power off because they feel the ball split open well on these tables. I feel because you've taken that power off, you're almost like losing your chance of potting a ball. Yeah. Because what what might happen with with say my break where I'm just trying to put a lot of power into it, if it doesn't go into one of the pockets, it may go off the cushion and go into another. Whereas if you're just trying to hit them slow and try and just get the balls open, it kind of gives a ball almost like one opportunity to go yeah. into a hole. Yeah. And uh, Sean Chipperfield from that dry break, he gets first chance and. Uh, just out of position slightly here. He's got the ball over the top right, but a little bit difficult to navigate from here. Just needs to control this well. He's played it well to screw off the red. Important that he got a fit contact and didn't sort of go below it and get the cannon. And the cue ball could have stuck at the top. But Obvious issue here, Luke, is clearly the eight ball. I mean, what are we doing here? We're we just landing it for the double now. I think he just plays for the double, yeah. yeah. It, it, there was never really an opportunity early on in the frame to develop it, which is obviously if you speak to a lot of the a lot of the players, they say to target your problem early. But he's, he's never really had a great opportunity for that, and you, you're just playing a risky game if you decide to go into it now. So just opting for the double. It's high, isn't it? It's a it, it's not a gimme double. It's um he's gonna have to find the right line. Oh, slid on him. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing with these rails, you know, he's played on them enough this weekend, so it's not an excuse for him. But if if that was sort of match one of the weekend, that, that can easily slide away from you. They're very, the, you know, the rails play very different to sort of any table that you'd play on locally. So getting used to shots like that, is, is, it can be tricky. Not often you see that from a, from a player. Reaching right over, preferring to do that bit, than get the... A little the bit careless, you have yeah. to say, as well, yeah. to be honest. That do you think there's a reason he wouldn't have got the rest out there? Yeah, I just don't know. The, maybe maybe the clock he, he just felt comfortable. Yeah. You know, the clock didn't, wouldn't have come into that no. in that scenario. Yeah, to be honest, I'd, I'd be tempted to play safe now. I think the one the one that he's closest to and just stun the cue ball behind the, behind the red on the right-hand rail. But, you know, he likes, he likes the cut. And yeah. Going to choose to attack, he just not got loads of control over the cue ball. He does. And he's, mm. to be fair, it's not on a ball. So he knew, he well, he knew, can't speak, he now will play safe. He definitely favours the aggressive option. 
Yeah, he Jeremy. always has been, hasn't he? Yeah. That is his style, so you know, I'm not surprised that he didn't play safe the shot the shot before. A wealth of experience with Jez as well. He's been playing around the circuit for, for years. Probably equal to um, to, to Sean really. I, I guess they're of a similar age. Has he arguably been around a bit longer than Sean? I think Sean played quite a bit of nine ball previously as well, didn't he? Yeah. Sort of before he came over. Yeah. Well, a bit of a saving grace there for Sean that the eight has gone across the path of that uh, red. Just wonder now, can he cut this to middle and send the cue ball top cushion and knock it out? I think he'll just play. you got to play safe again, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think there's even a bit of value of leaving the cue ball on the, on the left-hand side rail and leaving him sight of the eight to make sure he moves it. Whereas if you leave him sort of towards the right, you leave him an option to kick off the... So he can actually play this sort of off the left-hand rail. And it, it, there might be a gap where he can almost fin the black into the bottom left. Whereas if you did leave him over to the left-hand side rail, that shot's not on. Yeah. His best option would maybe a double in the middle, but the way the rails are sliding, it'd probably go nowhere near. But to be honest, a thick contact on the eight off the off the left hand side rail, you could you could end up leaving quite a good safety, but maybe you can't quite see far enough down the rail. Somehow went around the eight ball, there's not a lot of room there. So now a fabulous opportunity for Jez Graham to open his account. Just the start that Jez would have wanted. Yeah. Nice to care. <laughs> you know, come to the table now with just five balls in the open. Especially, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to mark that down as a mistake that he's that he's had to play safe in this frame after after Sean's missed the double. And Jez is a pretty quick fire player. I mean, Sean known for his speed around the table, but Jez is no slouch either. Could well be fireworks in this game. Expected to be a lot closer than the the first semi-final. Hitting obviously we saw had had chances, and um, it did end up the scoreline just ended up a little one-sided. But uh, I think this one's going to be much closer. That's my prediction anyway. A bit more pace in that one. Yeah, I don't blame him. To be fair, he's been a, he obviously he's been unlucky to be kicked in, but is yeah. it dry anyway. Uh, yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? So did that it takes a little bit off. Did a yellow go? No. No, yeah, it was dry as well. So, you know, that that's always a little bit easier on the mind yeah. of a ball player. Yeah, you, you yeah, kind, you of kind of console yourself in the fact yeah. that, well, he was going to get to the table I know anyway. he's got cue ball in hand behind the line, but, you know, it, to be fair, it could have landed even better. It could have landed somewhere on a problem ball or whatever, so... Bit of a tricky... Tricky yeah, not here. a nice layout at all what, either. What are you favouring here, Luke? Putting me on the spot there. <laughs> um, it's That's almost, why you're it's here. It's almost <laughs> a situation where I'm not against not chasing a finish, to be honest. He's tried to leave an angle so he can top this into the top left and go sh directly into the red, but you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have even been against just tucking the cue ball up behind the yellow on the on the mm. left hand side rail because I do f I feel this is one of the big things with this rule set is you know, you know, you just go for finishes because you feel the rules favour that, and that you should go for finishes. But yeah. I do feel there's a lot of the time there's, there's a good reason to not go for a finish yeah, and yeah. just sort of ask your opponent to go for one. Yeah. Because I think sometimes if if you just sort of ask a question, say I'm not sure if you'll clear these. But well, I don't fancy them anyway. I just hope you don't. Yeah. Sort of thing. It, if they get them, you just hold your hands up and say fair play. They they kept knocking in the finishes that I didn't fancy going for, but. He's overhit this one. He was looking for the gap down the left-hand side, and now he's got a thin cut on the red. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm with you. I just wonder whether oh, what a shot that is to develop that red. It's come out great for it's him. It's fantastic it? to to see that that line. Fantastic. Um, if you're Jez in in your chair, they you're a little bit annoyed oh, that oh, oh, he, that he's got into that and he's had that opportunity, like because he's not played to leave that angle and it, and, no. it, and it was available to him. So a little bit of frust little bit frustrating for Jez, I would feel anyway if yeah. I was sat in the opposite chair yeah. to that. 
because also if he doesn't get the cannon there or it, the cube ball goes in off the top, whatever, you know, he sort of, he looked like he almost potted himself into a little bit of trouble. Um, but he's come up with a good shot and, you know, he's, he's kind of, he's a little bit awkward here. He's just, but needs an angle on the one to the bottom left so he can track the cue ball across the table. Just, just going back to what you were saying about him not having to force the action there. Do you think maybe it's you know it's the kind of scoreboard pressure that you know he's he's too behind. He feels he needs to pull the trigger to get that frame on the board. He doesn't want to give Jez a chance in the frame. Yeah, it can, it can mean that, and yeah. I suppose that it, it also depends on the style of the player. You know, he's played loads aside here. <laughs> You know, if, if Sean's feeling really confident, he's the kind of player that would take this long as yeah. well, isn't he? Yeah. You know, the, the way the pockets play. A lot of people just dabble it in the middle, but, you know, the way Sean plays, he's always <laughs> going to play that long. So, But, yeah, just going back, I think it also depends on the style of the player. Some people think, you know, Sean's aggressive, so he, he's thinking, well, I, I want to bully you off the table. Yeah. So that's a, that's a really nice break. And... Uh, He's controlling it well. Yeah, he's, he's certainly. I think the w the one before, he lost a little bit of control just because of the change of the brake, sort of going from a very controlled speed to a bit more power, whereas that time he's he's got the control and the power just right. And, you know, the balls have gone everywhere. Cube up centre of the table, just giving yourself so many options. Yellows look really nice. I think the one by the left centre is probably your last ball. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's just rolling this in. It obviously passes to the top left. Top right, sorry. But I don't know if he's just mm. landed. Has he landed a touch awkward? Or I think he'll so. He'll be playing the one by the eight next, because it doesn't... Yeah, he's just sort of stunning this across. Wow, he's managed to force that, that angle. And he probably will not now play the ball down the, down the rail yeah, play, play yeah. the one by the eight next he's got to play this with a touch of right hand side though if he wants to play that one so yeah I don't blame him for going away play the one closest to the uh, bottom rail next float up for the one in the centre and then the one by the eight into the top right is your last ball I didn't realise he could punch across as far as he did when he was no. on that ball to the top no. right I thought he was dead straight to be honest and he did was doing well sort of just to punch across yeah. to get on the one by the eight into the top left but yeah, you manufacture that angle from nowhere well, my goodness that's a big bounce he's going to have to double this now he's going to have to play a double with a lot of left hand side as well so it hits the side rail then the top rail and as it hits the top rail it's going to play with a lot of check and sort of come in for to the left hand side of the eight ball the thing is Luke I mean he's he's not over hit that by a couple of inches he's over hit it by a foot yeah, yeah, it's a long, long way. You know, he, he wanted to make sure he weren't on the rail, but he had such a big margin for error. Red helps him yet, but he's he's got a shot. Does mm. it does it pass to the top left? Don't think so. Well, he's looking. I think even the overhead didn't really give us a clear view. He's, he's given it a really close look. It must be tight. I think he's decided it does. He's probably decided he ain't got a lot of choice. Yeah, that's true. That is true. All eyes on the pot. It wow. did float in. Ooh, uh, Tricky me. eight ball. Doesn't get any easier. The only good thing with the eight ball is the cue ball is safe. You can't go in off. So just focus 100% on the pot whether you p choose to play it into the left-hand centre or the bottom left pocket. Sort of a personal preference shot. I would play it in the bottom bit of security if you get really close as well could stick over the hole yeah. make it a little bit awkward yeah. just give Chippy something to think about huge shot in the context of the match is it there it's close but no is it going to drop no and then won the next frame as well you know and I'm sat there 4-3 behind and I'm thinking I should probably be 4-3 up here and it, it, it makes such a big difference yeah. in, in those matches and so you do think about it, and then Sean breaks like that, and these yellows just look lovely. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and as so often happens, that mistake from Jez 
that missed eight ball from Jez it's going to cost him two yeah. frames it's, it really is mad how, <coughs> how it happens in pool so often like I know as players we laugh and joke about it when, when you make a mistake you know oh, I'll go dry here but it, it, it does happen yeah. all the time yeah. I've actually said a few times that I, a lot of people that I think always struggle with the break, I, I genuinely believe it's because they go into every break believing they're going to go dry. Yeah. Whereas I, I think I I do, and probably Tom does as well, he, I go into every break believing I'm going to make a ball. Yeah. yeah. That, and, and, and to be fair, I, I do quite often. But maybe that's just because I'm lucky, I don't know. No, I, I really think there's something in it. I mean, I remember um, talking, having a conversation with Jack Whelan probably about seven years ago when he around about the time he was world champion i was doing a commentary with him and he said you know players who who struggle with the break he said i don't understand the mindset because he said i'm more surprised when i don't make a ball yeah you know and and, that, and that's his mindset to it and he's got he's a player with a huge break as well and, and you're absolutely right it, it it's just bizarre in in pool we've all done it where you know there's a there's a frame where you know there's a bit of pressure on it or you've just missed and made a mistake and lost a frame and it's almost as if there's some kind of un unconscious tension in your arm that just somehow translates into you not making a ball yeah. i mean it's just bizarre it really is bizarre but you're absolutely right i think i think there's something in it oh sure, this sure, one's got away yeah i feel like i feel like he took the wrong first ball to be honest he, he took the one to the right center but it was. I thought he should have played the one into the left centre, and and the the one that was over the right would have been his ball to lead down to the three at the bottom, which made the finish a lot easier. But Great double. Obviously, you get the double, and it and it's all forgotten about. But I have to say, I'd have played the one to the left centre, the one to the top left, and then the one to the right centre, and come down the table that way. Just felt it was a bit a bit easier. He can look very silly sometimes if you yeah. you know if you just misjudge it, especially if you if you ever pick up somebody else's cue and try and play that, you probably would look very silly because it's a shot that you know you you, you kind of learn how your cue yeah. plays with side. Yeah, yeah. He went back to the power. Yeah, and he also moved the cue ball. Yeah. Because he, I, I believe he's broke from the centre every break yeah. other than that one, but a chance on yellows. He just has to sort of stun this one long first shot. Stun it dead. Next shot will be the yellow into the left centre, and then, and then you've you've got a pattern. Not sure what he's no. lining up here. Is, well, he, is he? He's not playing the treble on the red and sending the cue ball into the pack. Doesn't need to, does he? That's exactly what he's playing. Like I say, I'm, these I'm, yellows are nice. I'm with you, Luke. The the yellows were. Yeah, that, that's a. Uh, they were all there. Yeah, I, 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 he must just not have seen it. They, I they all had sure. a pattern. They all, all had a pocket. I, th I thought they were really nice. I yeah. have to say, yeah. um, sort of every ball led to each other. Yeah. It, the, the, he's now moved to yellow, and which was by by the uh, by the centre by the red. That was your last ball for the eight into the bottom right. They, they were really nice. I suppose he's, you could argue he's been a little bit lucky to leave. Leave an awkward layout for Chippy, but. <laughs> Nearly. He, did, he didn't want to be, be playing that with one second left. Quickly called his extension. I wonder if he if he can drop this in and float the cue ball up like an inch. He can now power this ball into the bottom right. He wants to flick the top of the red to the left of it, and and then the cue ball go into the red and yellow on the rail. Oh, the, the red done it for him, but yeah, so a little bit too much to ask for now. He's gonna mm. he's gonna pop the ball into the bottom right and yeah. send the cue ball back into them. Yeah, but it looks still a like very tough clearance yeah. here. Though. High tariff for sure. It's one and six two. You're happy to you're happy to have a little bit of a chase. Yeah, yeah. True. You lose this one, and you maybe rein it in a, a little bit more, but. And yeah. if ever there was somebody to take out a finish like this, it's probably Sean. Well, Jazz will come to the table. He's not really going to like what he sees, though. These He's yellows. Just be happy. These yellows look far better when he first came to the table. So he's going to he's going to try and pop this down the line. 
And incidentally, I mean, obviously, from, from the match situation, Sean obviously just needs one more frame. But He's got a chance now. Yeah, but, but, but equally, you know, 14 minutes left. Sean won't mind seconds being burnt off the clock now either. No, absolutely not. Because the clock is very much in his favour. Oh, I, I thought he didn't need to play that that hard either. But yeah, it's worked for him. He's got, he's got a shot. I think it goes into the top left. Cue it confidently. It's up to him whether he comes up the table now. But I don't think I would. I'd, I'd just screw it in. Play for the one into the bottom left as your next shot. The cue ball will then do its own work later on. But yeah. Chippy gets his chance to yeah. seal the match up here. Yeah. The balls, and, uh, the balls again just lead to each other here. Shouldn't really see any issues. Sort of this next shot will tell us once he's played this ball down the line. Sort of feel it's the only pot that he could miss, but I don't think he will. The eight ball goes into every single pocket. See how he's feeling there. He may take the one at the top, stun the cue ball off the right hand side rail, but. I I'd have been surprised if it did. This is the right ball. Screw up the table. And you can literally land anywhere. Yeah. This black goes in every single pocket on the table. He may screw back to the middle now. Oh, is the other side. Yeah. So we'll see Chippy v Tom in the final. What a great performance from Sean Chipperfield. That really was fantastic from him. Um, and she, to be fair, she played very well in that final. Um, she hasn't quite hit the mark yet. Um, I was just talking to her before the final. Um, she's played well, but not exceptional. Um, she's Her opponents have made the mistakes uh, to allow her in, so she'll be wanting to get off on a good foot um, early part of this match. Really stamp some authority. And it's a sledgehammer of an opening break from Champs. That was very impressive. And look at the chance she's given herself in the opening frame. When they did play in the final of event one a couple of months ago, it was an incredible standard. 8-6, highly dramatic, but full of quality. I would suggest probably the highest quality final we've had. Yeah, it, did, it really set a good tone for the start of the women's pro section, I think. Um, it was a really, really top quality final um, to kick things off. Yeah, it really was, really set the tone. She won't mind that nudge. Holds up a hand because not as played, but come out nice. Just to draw back for the, the black in the corner pocket. Uh, Goes in the centre as the well. Center. Well, it's going to be a very quick start here for Amy Beecham. Break clearance, holds up a hand, but it was a nudge, but it was okay. She was going to get out anyway, it felt like. This is still on the table, they're hitting the ball, they're getting a bit more used to the conditions. Um, and with this single elimination format, you don't get that. Um, but what you do get is top quality um, opposition and a lot of the time even though you might not be winning very matches to start with, uh, very many matches to start with you'll find that your game comes along with it so it's it's sort of like a you know in terms of progression it there's a longer term game uh, gain in it yeah That was a bit of a strange one from yeah. Amy there. I was about to say back to the match and Amy's given herself another good opportunity off the break but 
That's gone very quickly. First chance to punish an error. Still a very good chance on Reds here. It's a surprising miss from, from Amy because this is a good layout. They're right at the bottom. There is room to get to it. It should make a very good last ball. keyboard control here and I, I can't really see any issues. Just off straight the wrong way potentially. Certainly can't get close to the red, just got to no. find the gap. That looks a little bit short. It wasn't that shot, the shot before or two shots ago. She's not on this one. It, it's just the way, the way she went about her work in the middle that's caused her the issue. And if she's t trying to turn it in with side, she could end up behind the yellow after potting it as well. Yeah, had to turn it too much, so in the end it's just an attempted safety. Turn the table over to Champs and a disappointment from Harriet this time. chance for yellows though as well. Yeah, didn't really uh, not taking it. No, I'm surprised by that actually. She only got the one yellow that's closest to the black that would have caused any kind of issue, but it, it it's got other avenues that she could have played position on. So I am surprised she didn't take it. But she hasn't left uh she left the one cushion. That's going to be a foul, so a cue ball in hand. That opens up the one above the eight ball, that now goes to the corner. Shouldn't really need any more safeties, they're all there now. to be mindful that the black now doesn't go to the corner um, corner pocket with the red block in it so she'll be wanting to go up, up table now and leave that yellow closest to the red for the last ball yeah and with that in mind that's quite a loose shot mm. should have been a little bit higher up the table here Careful not to overrun. Come back to the straight would be nice, or just past the straight. Touch, uh, well, I suppose it was just off angle, so just needs to be careful when playing this one. The angle's taking her towards the eight ball. Mm. So much so, she just 
decided to go all in and kiss it towards the corner bag. And that's come out nice. Yeah, the nudge worked out well. And they were both in the same position at the last event. Another crunching break from Amy. Interesting, actually, because at the last event, I think they were given the option of what to do, and I think Amy decided to play her match. I think she won the title and then went and played another game till about one o'clock in the morning. I think it was her opponent that wanted to play still, uh, actually. And she said she and would. She said she, she, would, said she yeah. would, and then but Harriet said she'd rather play in the morning, yeah. and that's that was what was allowed. Yeah. Good leave off this break. Reds look good here. Amy just struggling with the cue ball in the previous frame. See if she can get to grips with it in this one. It's just the red that's close to the yellow, you know, where the blue blue spot is. I mean, it, it, it goes to the corner, uh, the bottom corner, but she, she's got to get out for it. I mean, yeah, comes around to have a look now. It also goes to the it goes to the top right corner as well. So she's got the angle to play the white over there now. Take it, take it up into the top corner instead. Extension court. Mm, a little bit short. On the red, but can you get on the last red? I can only assume maybe she thought the yellow was in in the way of the cue ball naturally running over to take it in the corner bag. Looks like if she makes the pot here and tries to get underneath the cue, the uh, centre pocket, she's going to be going dangerous close to an off from the overhead. Yeah. Just pulls it back to leave a thin edge on this red. This is thin. It's really thin. Line a bit on the cue ball as well. Yeah, it was thin near jaw and refuses to fall. Another opportunity that goes for Amy. It's all about the one on the left-hand side, just landing nicely on it. Yeah, I wondered whether she was going to try and land nicely or just try and bump it out. Oh, looks like it's the bump out playing in this one now. Yeah. Does that yellow just come in the way of the other one? Or she still got on? Yeah, this looks really awkward. It's not come out nicely. out in an aggressive way nothing on whilst Harriet has got the snooker Amy's a fair chance to make this I think if she's going to play the cannon she's got to play the cannon early for me play the cannon early it doesn't quite come out you've got more chances to be on something yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I, I can see, you know, she left the, the yellow down the bottom of the table as a bit of insurance to land on, but she, I, I feel like she could have maybe played it a little bit harder to make sure that yellow does come away from the white. Oh, it's an excellent pot. Needs another. She has got the insurance so that Amy's red is on the cushion. If she is going to miss, she's only going to believe in a horrible double. How good are those two pots back to back? Excellent three balls to get out for Harriet Haynes and get herself in front. And it's 15 seconds a shot. No problems. Calm as you like. That's the problem for Amy, her natural. She wants to go and, and do that little wonder to both sides of the ball, nearly every shot. 15 seconds a shot, that's hard to do. Bit of adrenaline in that one. Oh, just got into it a touch too much now. Pressure, eight ball. Oh, we've done it. Yeah, just got into that previous shot too much. Put the pressure on herself. So with 3.25 left to play, Harriet Haynes has the opportunity to get herself in front and have the break. Slightly awkward. If she gets it right, she'll eat the time up as well. Getting this lead. Oh, right in the heart of the pocket, back into perfect position. Should go and complete the clearance now. It'll be her break next as well. Not much time left on the clock. Watching the clock on every shot, running the beeps down. There's no golden breaks or golden ducks in play. And with every second, it's a dagger for Amy Beecham. This is Harriet Haynes' match right now. see Amy wincing in the background. She knows what a chance it was that she's let go. Fully punished from Harriet Haynes and now Harriet has one hand on the trophy here. And it, in a 30 second um, time clock I, f I'd have, I think she would have got that black. Yeah um, I agree. But in the 15 second clock you, you want to be as good on it as possible and she just overran it by maybe two foot I think in the end and just made it all that more difficult and now Harriet's got yeah this match is over Harriet knows she has won calls her extent extension immediately after making a ball off the break makes a pot here there will be no time left Yellow balls in play. just 40 seconds left in this match she doesn't care whether she clears up or not Another brilliant final between these two, though. Yeah, absolutely. It's got all, had all the twists and turns and 
highs and lows of each player. And Amy has had enough, comes forward to shake hands. It is Harriet Haynes that gets her hands on the trophy this time round. It's the same final, a different winner. Harriet Haynes walks away as the Women's Pro Series 3 champion. And announce Harriet Haynes as the Women's Series 3 Pro Series champion. We know what's a uh, big topic of Tom's game. Just well, as I was about to build it up, he's let me down. Well, that's exactly the same start as he had in his semis against Hit and Patel. Break in off in that same corner pocket. His next break, he went in off in the other corner pocket. And he has been breaking phenomenally for, for a long, long time. But just today, it's been a bit sketchy. Yeah, and uh, if you're chippy, this is the ideal start you want. Well, you'd like these, wouldn't you, Dom? These yellows? I would, but I still think I'd find a way to go wrong. But I'll give it a good go. I might get four or five and then go wrong. I'll wait wait till the very end. At least I'll get value for money. But no, this is the ideal situation. And um, with that bottom yellow, as you saw, part in, that made it pretty easy. You should uh, it probably got up the table now for the one in the middle. And straight away he's making me look silly, which is good. It's a bit interesting because he's going to have some sort of a shot to play to either get from that ball up in on the bulk line back down. Because he's sort of... So he's going to have to get somewhere where he is now, kind of blue spot area. You can see someone like Shaw and he backs his putting so well. There's other players who maybe not quite as confident putting they're trying to get right in behind this yellow but for someone like Shaw and it's just give me a shot and I'll knock it in and point and click. Yep, that's exactly what it is and perfect start really for Sean and it's always good in a big final just to settle yourself, get that first frame on the board. It can take a lot out of you and I think you know, without not to be uh, taken out of context, but Tom's, you know, he, he, he'll he tell you himself he's no athlete. He, well, uh, we're all human at the end of the day, and you yeah, get tired. You've and, got uh, to. But to be fair to Tom as well, though, as much as, you know, he, he, he wouldn't be the fittest guy on the circuit, but... I mean, it's mentally draining, isn't yeah, it? It's got to be. But the way he plays, because he, you know, it's well documented, he breaks so big, a lot of the time, a lot of his matches, he can sort of... He can get through relatively easy. He can coast through just because, you know, lo lo like this, he's broke off. And look at the chance he's left himself. He's still got to knock the balls in, but at the level Tom Cousins plays at, this is a 99 out of 100 clearance. Probably 100 out of 100 if you're being brutally honest. But, like, he's not having to really dig deep to, to knock some of these finishes in. So, over a tournament, a couple of his matches might be, for him pretty much a stroll in the park just because of you know how big he breaks and how much the chances he gives himself whereas someone who perhaps don't break big who has to work hard for a, for every ball and you know they, 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 they could take a lot more out of them mentally and physically I did actually see Tom um, maybe an hour and a half two hours ago as I, I was in town I was on the way back and he was walking back from uh I'm guessing from some sort of chippy or takeaway outlet. He had his food in his hand. So I thought he'd uh, be uh, perfectly prepared as he'd prepare himself for any well, match. That could be his ritual. Have, yeah. a, have a bite to eat, get yourself ready for your game. Just been bad if you saw him staggering outside a pub. Yeah, that would Preparation. <laughs> that wouldn't be ideal. But it's been perfect pool so far. Three chances, three clearances from both players. Not the best split, possibly not the best rack. No. Little pop in the air with the cue ball there as it struck the front ball. Disappointment on Tom Cousins' face. And, uh, so chippy. 
I think he must be looking at the yellows. As he takes a red. Well done. Well done, me. He's opted for red. I don't know about you. It feels like quite a big frame to me, this one. It's gone so quick through the first six frames. But by the time we're four to lead, I feel... It's not panic stations for Sean yet, but... No. Well, obviously, that red near the left-hand middle is going to get an angle on that. and He could break it out here yeah. now, the bad red. Bottom oh round. Right. There you go. No, clever shot. You outdid me there, Dom. I, my, my brain was fixated on him just dropping that in and playing the, the red into the centre, but... I think, can he play... He's going to play the red glancing off the yellow here. Can he run the cue ball into the yellow on the blue spot? And that, that's actually a really good shot. It is. He's giving himself the angle to get down for the, the red on the bottom as well. He's got such creativity, Sean. He's, I mean, if he used to be the shot before where he's broke the red out, if he used to be ultra critical, you could perhaps say there was a maybe a, lack, a little lack of care. But, I mean, the shot he's followed up with is just really good. He's got to control this nicely. And oh, he's in off. He's no. in off. Oh, do you know what? I thought it was going to hang there then. I don't think he felt that was ever going to go close, but... No, I, don't. I must admit, I thought that was just going to hang there and he'd, he'll have a shot into the middle with the other red. But, wow. I mentioned earlier there was a couple of shots both players have played where they got a bit more out of the queue than they expected and... That's another example there, because Sean didn't need to be... He had quite a big margin to, to land shy of being straight on that red, because he, he always had the option to leave the black into the corner. Um, but but to go near the middle is really... It's really quite careless at this level, really. And, and Sean would be the first to tell you that. And Tom just... It's just second nature for Tom, isn't it? Get the cue out, clear up a few times, put it back, have something to eat, do it all yeah. again in an hour. <laughs> just had a just had a message from one of his friends, Dwayne, who's on the way down to pick him up because he's got no car. I hope uh hope Tom's giving you a cut of the winnings, Dwayne, for going out your way for him. I think we both know the answer to that, though. Indeed. <laughs> <coughs> just going to bring the cue ball back here. Yellow in the middle, just run through. Give himself a little straight pot into that top right-hand corner. And this will be a three-frame lead and starting to pull away a bit. Have you ever seen Tom get annoyed on the ball table? No. No, I don't think I have either. Tom doesn't get annoyed on the pool table. Tom doesn't seem to get annoyed. To be fair, he's a pretty laid back guy. And he goes to black. Cousins now 5 2 in front against Sean Shipperfield. Broke generally pretty good. It's got red, so. Well, he's made a ball. Didn't really explode there, did they? It's no. Sort of Where'd you go here, Dom? I think it's probably got to be red, but. I'm saying that, I don't think yellows are too bad. If you can flick this I one. I think I prefer yellows just for the sake of the two at the bottom of the right hand side of the table. Just so making that first pot, which is a, I think it's a cut into the middle, isn't if it? If you can flick it in the middle and land straight on the yellow to the right centre, sorry, on the rail, and then play the one into the... When he pots this in the corner, he'd be able to float down to the red on the left cushion, which leaves him the yellow. So if he lands somewhere between the yellow and the cue ball now, for his next shot, he can play the yellow to the right centre as we look, and just come underneath the eight ball, and just sit on the red... He'll be on the yellow to the right centre. Oh, he looks like he got a bit much into that, but he might have 
had other ideas. He might be looking to leave them two till last, which is he in the gap. I think he is in the gap. And the black should pass between those two reds into this bottom corner. Is he a bit straight? He'd like to probably get on the yellow beneath the black and the red ball next. He might be able to leave it straight into the top corner. Nope. He's going to leave the two there, I think. Or is he going to... So he's going to pop the one along the bottom cushion. A bit... I can't really call his shots. He sees it very, very different. Well. I thought he could have left the cue ball somewhere in the line of sort of the right centre just to float across the yellow into... You can play the yellow and the eight ball and the both in the right centre if you wanted. But he's got to land the right side of this yellow. And that's... I think that looks pretty good. He can just play this with a bit of right-hand side and shunt the red out of the way to black, like so. And Sean. And down she goes. Keeps himself in it. 7-3. And if he... We well, went with a cut break. He's flown the ball in. I think he'd be pretty happy with that. Yeah, he wasn't playing the cut break early, was he? No, he... Uh, I remember first time I seen him play the cut break a good few years ago against Phil Harrison. And it was on a different cloth, which is was quite a bit slower than this one. And... I've never hit a front break as hard as he hit that cut break and it was like a shotgun had gone off when he hit it and the bulls looked scared he potted about six of them <laughs> and he just had to dob them in it was, it was, it was you see I've, I've tried it and and because I, I like to hit the ball hard and I just get the cue ball off the table yeah there is to be fair I mean I'm not a huge fan of the cut break and I do think you should have to hit the front ball but there is a skill to it and you and Mr Melling I think quite a lot of players Actually, Rob Wall actually said that as well today. It's a little bit of a... I mean, it's ironic that we're... I'm about to say it's a cop-out and you've got the best breaker in the game opting to cut rake. Maybe for me, I'd say arguably, and this is a big statement, the second best breaker in the game in Tom. Because I do think... My old mate Luke has got the best break in the game. Mm-hmm. I do think he's right up there and he don't get, probably don't get, I mean it's getting recognised because he's running deep in a lot of comps now but. Well you won Pro, pro Series event too. Yeah and uh, certainly, I don't think anyone hits it as hard as Tom but well. no one gets the layouts Luke gets. This is now looking, well it's about to say all over, he wanted another couple of inches there, can he, can he hold for these two yellows? I think so yeah. You play a little bit but of I don't left hand side and just sort of get a spin to try and kill the cue ball. Do you think the eight ball goes underneath the red or is he going to play it cushion off the back of the red? I thought Tom must have already looked at that. There you see the side in. We're now three balls away from the title for Tom Cousins. I have to say, should he get the finish? It's been a fantastic performance from Tom. He, he's not put a foot wrong. No, should be faultless. Sean's made a couple of errors. But Tom just just doesn't look like missing, does he? Just fantastic performance once again. And Let's see the oh. April didn't go, so he's played a great shot there. And this is it for the title, ladies and gents. Tom's about to take home his 784 millionth title <laughs> of his career. Well, it'd be the first one this season in the Pro Series. He didn't win the first two. No, he did win the British Open, didn't he? Yep. Great shot there from Cousins and this black ball now for the title. And what a performance. Brilliant. In it goes. Well played Tom Cousins. Tom Cousins defeats Sean Shipperfield. Eight frames to three. He is Pro Series Event 3 champion. Your champion, Tom Cousins.